Alright, lesson 3.8, factoring special polynomials. This will be our last lesson in the Unit 3 on factors and products. Uh, we'll identify certain polynomials here that uh, cannot be factored using any of the methods that we've done before. And so as a result, we're going to look at these special cases, if you will. Alright, so let's get started. A special type of polynomial we'll be dealing with is called a difference of squares. is a binomial of the form a squared minus b squared. So that's all that's going to be listed. All right. Now we can think of this trinomial as um, a trinomial with a middle term of 0. So what, that, what I mean by that is uh, we can think of a squared minus b squared as really being that there is a middle term, but it's like 0ab minus b squared. Now that might be a little confusing for right now, but I think when I dive into an example, you'll see here in a second how easy these can be. All right. So. For a difference of squares, uh, what we know is this. If you have a difference of squares, like a squared minus b squared, to factor it fully, all you simply do is you start with the two brackets, you take the square root of the a term, so, or sorry, the square root of the a squared, and you get a, put an a there. You take the square root of this next term, which is b and b, and you make one of them positive and one of them negative, and then that has been fully factored. Now, this first term, the a squared and this b squared, they first have to be perfect squares so that you can take the square root of them. And then also it has to be subtraction sign in the middle. So I'm going to use this method to do these uh, next type of uh, questions here. And you'll see how easy they can be. All right. So I first start out with my two brackets. What's the square root of 81m squared? Well, I simply just get a 9m and a 9m. The square root of 49 is 7 like so, make one of them positive, make one of them negative. Now I want to take this example over here and I'll show you why that middle term is zero like I was explaining in the, uh, the beginning. Well imagine I was to foil this out, you have 9m times 9m is 81m squared. 9m times the negative 7 gives you negative 63m, and we get plus 63m minus 49. Now do you see that this is really what the questions start out with? Well, this is why I said I have zero m's, because those m's cancel out. And so that's how you can say that middle term is zero. Okay. So we'll uh, bomb through some of these ones. Number two is another easy one. You should definitely try this one on your own. Um, you can use the above as a template. So the square root of the 25 is 5. 5. Make one of them positive, make one of them negative. does not matter which order you put it in. And the square root of 36x squared is simply just 6x. 6x, like so difference of squares. Alright, now for three, four, and five examples, we start kicking into overdrive a little bit. So, like any other factoring questions, you always look, is there anything that you can factor out right away? Well, I notice that I can factor out a five, alright? You can factor out an x squared or anything like that, or x to the fourth, because those two variables are different, but I can factor out the five. So now I'm sitting with this, alright? Five goes into 80 16 times. Now, Notice how I can take the square root of x to the fourth, and I can take the square root of, oops, this should be a four over here, of negative 16y to the fourth. Well, since I can do that, I can use the difference of squares. So I start with my two brackets again. The square root of x to the fourth, so basically I'm saying this, is just x squared. So I'm going to write an x squared in here and here. Make one of the signs positive, make one of them negative. The square root of 16 is 4, so I put a 4 in there and a 4 in there and the square root of y squared, sorry, y to the fourth is y squared, y squared. Now, a lot of people, if I give you this question on a test, you're going to move on from there, you're going to be really happy, you thought you did a wonderful job, but not so much. All right, uh, this binomial right there is another difference of squares, so you can simplify that further. So, the reason I can't simplify this first one right there is simply because there is a positive right there, and so it doesn't fall into the difference of squares. All right, there's no... Uh, sum of squares, if you will. So this one I'm going to factor further because I can take the square root of x squared, which is x, the square root of 4y squared, which is 2y, and 2y, make one of them positive, make one of them negative, and that would be your final solution. On the next page here, this is another one very similar to number three. I would uh, encourage you to maybe pause this and uh, try this on your own. So. I'll first look, is there anything I can factor out right away? I can factor out a 2. That leaves me with 81 v to the power of 4 minus w to the power of 4. I'll now use my difference of square technique 
It gives me 9v squared and 9v squared. Make one of them positive, make one of them negative. The square root of w to the fourth is w squared, w squared. And again, a difference of squares popped out. And this is often going to happen when you, actually it'll always happen when you have these ones to the power of four. So that's where they're going to always try and get you on these ones. Very common provincial exam question, so we've got to make sure we're good to go on these. So this becomes 3v, 3v, uh, a w and a w. Make one of them positive, one of them negative, and you got your solution. Okay. Last one that I have here is I thought I'd throw one at you that has some fractions. Okay. Students always panic with fractions. But just think of this. This is like your a squared term minus your b squared term right there. Well, what is the square root of x squared? Well, you just simply get an x and an x. But it's over 36. Square root of 36 is 6 and 6. Make one positive, make one negative. What's the square root of y squared? Y, y, and put that all over 8, and all over 8. Now, I would accept this as final or as, uh, full marks, but uh, I think sometimes in the textbook they may get a common denominator there, but it doesn't really make it any, uh, any nicer for me anyways. So I'm happy with you leaving it like that. So that's how you deal with one with, uh, with fractions. Okay. If you uh, mosey on down here, I have just a diagram of uh, how the difference of squares works. Uh, you can take a look at that. But we will continue on to the second type that we're going to deal with. All right. So second type is going to be a perfect square trinomial. So in a difference of squares, one binomial is in the form a minus b. And we figured out that the other one is in the form of a plus b. All right. We'll now take a look at another type of special polynomial known as a perfect square trinomial. So this time we actually well have three terms, where both of the binomials are the same. All right. So what I'm making reference to is back up here when I had a squared minus b squared. When I factored, I had one as positive and one as negative. Well, now I'm going to look at what happens when these both pop out and they're both negative or both positive. What happens in that scenario? Okay. So using this pattern below that I have right here, um, these perfect square trinomials can be factored easier than following the factoring method that we used earlier in this unit. So you still can factor these kind of using the old school method, the AC method, if you will, but uh, it makes life a little bit longer than it needs to be. So we can instead write, um, so we're going to deal with the uh, polynomials in the form of a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, and also in the form of a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So if you take a look right here at what happens, it says the area models of perfect square trinomial result in a square. In factored form, a perfect square trinomial is the following. So if you have something that's in this format and you factor it out, you're simply just going to have a plus b all squared. When you have something in this format, you're going to have a minus b all squared. All right. Now I'll show you kind of how this works in relation to this first example. If you notice right here, well, what is a? Well, a essentially is 2x, because you see if I take 2x and you square it, you get 4x squared. So keep that in mind, right? and I'll just write this on the side, that a is equal to 2x. Well, that means that b must be whatever that is. So that means that I would take b squared and set equal to 9, b is equal to 3. Do You see that now if you take a times b, multiply them together, so 2x times 3, you get 6x, and I multiply by 2, you get that middle term. That's how you can determine that indeed number 6 is in that format. All right? And watch how easy this is now to factor this. You could have used the long AC method, gone 4 times 9 is 36, numbers that multiply to give you 36, I have a sum of 12, but that's too long. All you need to do now here is, it says you take the, so this first term a squared, and you take the square root of it, so a. So I'm going to take the square root of uh, 4x squared, which is 2x, so I put a 2x there. All right? Since it's a positive, I'm going to be adding, and then I take the square root of the last term, which is 3 and we get 2x plus 3 all squared. Now to prove this to you that that's the right answer, over here on the side, I have 2x plus 3, and I'll just square it, and you'll see what will happen. 2x times 2x gives you 4x squared, plus 6x, plus 6x, plus 9, and you'll notice that when I simplify this, when I gather my like terms, this gives me what we started out with. Isn't that beautiful? If that's not beautiful, I don't know what is. Ooh, I know you're smiling right now. You love that. Number seven. All right, I'll shrink this up so we can maybe see this uh, guy up top here. All right, so you'll notice that this one's in the opposite format. So therefore, all you have to do is take the square root of the first term. The square root of 4y squared just gives you a 2y. 
and the square root of the last one. Ooh, little typo right here, actually, that I, I did. Um, can you change this negative 20 to a negative 20xy right there? Okay. Um, in any event, the square root of the last term it would be a 5x. And then since there's a subtraction sign in there, it's got to be subtraction like this, all squared. And to prove this to you, over here on the side, you would have 2y minus 5x and 2y minus 5x. So we have 2y times 2y is 4y squared minus 10xy minus 10xy plus 25y squared, sorry, x squared. And when you simplify this, you'll see that we'll get back to what the question began with. All right. So that concludes this uh, unit. Uh, we ended off here with two different uh, methods of factoring. One was the difference of squares. That's the first one we did. That was the a, mi sorry, a squared minus b squared. And the last one here is the perfect square trinomial. The perfect square trinomial, I find that some students will forget this and will just do it the long way. If that's the way you want to do it, then that's absolutely fine. All right? um, there's very few questions where you'll actually need to know this uh, concept. Uh, but the difference of squares, when we first start out with, that's one that's going to pop up on every single provincial exam, and we've got to make sure that we're bang on and ready to go. So once you're done with this uh, lesson, you will um, do your assignment, and uh, once that assignment's done, you can start your review stuff, make sure you do your review quiz, and then you can meet with me on the hot seat.